For you new players out there, Crota's End is probably a bit of a different experience at a proper light level. So this video is going to be both an abridged guide of Crota's End and a review of what has changed. But just a warning, not really too much changed. The Abyss is the first encounter in the raid where you need to navigate the maze via lanterns. The strategy for this is, well, it's just run the maze, don't die, and open the bridge at the end to escape. Pretty simple stuff. The lanterns will get rid of your weight of darkness, which is a debuff that will slow you down. There are no changes in this encounter compared to the old Crota's End, except wizards will now spawn during the very end of the encounter where you unlock the bridge, likely in an attempt to try to stop people from abusing certain geometry. Otherwise, there's still major knights spawning in the same spots, still a lot of thrall, no big changes. There's not enough. Not worthy. Really. Really. Not worthy. Really. Oh my god, you even did it anyway. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> you said you weren't going to do it. Oh god. I just got a block leopard. Oh wait, where's that? Oh, there it is. Got it. The bridge encounter for the most part remains intact in spirit, but has some new requirements. There are 10 statues in front of Crota's fortress that you need to light up to pass the encounter. To light them, you need to kill gatekeepers with a sword. To get a sword, you kill a sword bearer which all spawn on the original side where you start the encounter. So the goal is to get everyone across the bridge, but you can only cross the bridge when you have a sword. The two things on the sides where you start and on the opposite side of the bridge are called Annihilator Totems, which explode if you don't have someone standing near it while someone is standing on the middle plate lighting up the bridge. You send one person across, and then another person, and then when you have three, the people on the other side do the same thing as the people on the starting side. You stand on the middle plate to open the bridge while having people on the totem so that you don't explode. The people on the original side can step off of their plates and it's their turn to cross the bridge. It now appears that you need five people to cross the bridge in order to progress to the next part of the fight. Or rather, you need to kill five gatekeepers in order to progress to the next part of the fight, which technically requires five people to cross. When the fifth person crosses and kills their gatekeeper, the game will permanently unlock the bridge and spawn a lot of swords. You then kill stuff with or without a sword until the remaining gatekeepers spawn. You kill them and you should have all 10 statues lit up. So the thing that changed here was that you need five people to cross instead of just however many you wanted. Before, you used to be able to just have one person cross and you could kind of cheese the rest of the encounter, but for now, at least at first glance, doesn't seem like you can do that anymore. The Thrall Way remains unchanged. The Ear Ute encounter also remains unchanged, but I will quickly go over it. Oh, I got bumped. No! Problem. I'm probably gonna die. Oh god, I'm so slow. Yeah, I'm dead. Seems like bridge is oh, special no. and heavy weapon. Yeah, oh, so you boosted that's me. A, that's what I'm thinking, Brandon. Oh. I think it's special. I think it's. I think it's all the same. You have about two minutes and twenty seconds to kill your Ute. In order to gain access to her, you need to kill the two Shriekers that guard the inner doorway. To make the Shriekers vulnerable, you need to first kill the two wizards guarding them. But to even get the wizards to spawn, you need to kill the knights protecting the doorways. So, you kill the knights, and then you kill the wizards, and then you kill the shriekers, and then you kill Iryut. Crota also remains unchanged in concept with some minor tweaks. First off, the two boomer knights and wizard that spawn back and forth are no longer major enemies. They are red health bars. An ex machina sniper from Wrath of the Machine will one shot the knights. I assume some other snipers will as well. Secondly, Crota will now spawn an Oversoul every single time his shield is regenerated, no matter what. So that's a new thing to look out for. Finally, the commonly used middle ledge is now blocked off by an invisible wall, so you can't stand there anymore. Otherwise, ogres will still spawn, 
Crota moves in the same rotation, so you still need to rotate back and forth, and you still have the same Enrage mechanic where Crota will cast one more Oversoul at about 15% health remaining. If you don't know this encounter, here's how it works. The only way to damage Crota is with a sword. A sword bearer will spawn every so often, so you kill the sword bearer, and the sword bearer will drop a sword. The rest of the team needs to shoot Crota's shield off before you can actually deal damage though, often done via rocket launchers. But Crota's shield regenerates very quickly if not completely removed, so it does need to be monitored. After the shield is removed, you run in and hit him with the sword until he goes immune again. You repeat this process while avoiding Crota as he moves around until he dies. All in all, Crota's End did not get too many drastic changes. It was mostly a lot of fixes and tweaks as opposed to grand sweeping changes, which I think is a very good thing. I don't think Bungie really wanted to drastically change anything in the raid. The spirit of the bridge encounter is still intact as are most other encounters. Good stuff, no complaints from me, and apparently you can still solo Crota, it's probably just a little bit harder. Be sure to check out the challenge mode guides when you're ready for that. Thank you all very much for watching, I'll see you next time.